All right. In the middleweight division of this main card, UFC 290, a huge fight went down between Drikus Duplessis and Robert Whitaker. And Drikus Duplessis has stamped his meal ticket, gentlemen, defeating Bobby Knuckles, Robert Whitaker, by TKO, the official time, 223 of the second round in a three-round contest. My goodness. Mark, what is your take of the performance of Duplessis? I still can't believe that we are sitting here talking about this result. I I really can't. It, he is one of the most interesting fighters to figure out how he is doing the things that, that he is doing. And for the first two minutes of this fight, you know, it was all Whitaker on the mm -hmm. feet, just like we expected. He was picking him apart. He was countering him. He was timing Duplessis. Then he gets a takedown. Yes, Drikas gets up, but through half a round, it seems like Rob is in control. And then you do start to see just a, a little bit how the constant pressure of, of Duplessis was starting to matter, a bit more success on the feet. And then the, the sheer power and size of, of Duplessis is accentuated on that takedown because it was not the cleanest head and arm takedown ever, but it didn't matter. He got him down. And then he was very powerful on top. Rob was in some real trouble underneath him. He was struggling down there. And then they, you know, we get the reset, end of the round, and you're like, all right, you know, Rob's going to figure this out. His technique is so much better. The same thing everyone in the world was saying going into this fight. And round two starts, and again, the technique of Whitaker is winning. He he takes those first couple minutes. He's landing on Drikas. Um, and for the most part, and this is all fight long, Drikas does have a, a really nice high guard that ends up taking the sting off a lot of these shots. But then despite the fact that Whitaker is kind of calming you again as you watch, it's one monster jab. Drikas throws a jab um, that... that Rob evades. Rob then starts to step in, and Drikas times another one as Rob is coming toward him that lands hard and clean, and Rob dropped to a knee. Obviously, he did get back up, but he was hurt, and Drikas knew it, and he poured on the pressure, and he got him out of there. The bombs um, to the to the body and to the head against the cage, and he stops Robert freaking Whitaker. Like, it's... It's incredible. And, and as I said, the, the craziest part of all of it is that this man is now the number one ranked middleweight in the world. At yeah. least I'm assuming he is in the UFC. He is for me. And I still can't put my finger on exactly what makes him so elite. And I, I really can't recall another fighter that I have quite felt this way about because his striking is not elite. It, it's far from the most technical we've ever seen. His wrestling is not elite. You know, we've seen guys scramble out from under him in other fights. His jiu-jitsu is not elite. It's not like he is otherworldly there. And don't get me wrong, he is good at every single one of these things for absolutely certain. He can knock you out. He can sub you. He can wrestle. But usually when guys reach these heights, you're able to say, like, wow, his this is unreal. And with Drikas, you're not really saying that. So I, I've been trying to think it through ever since this fight because it's just... It's like sticking in my brain that this man just beat Robert Whitaker, and I so did not see it coming. And I, I think the key for him is really just that he is huge and powerful for middleweight, yeah. and in that he is very hard to hurt, very hard to hurt, and will never stop pressuring you. So when you mix that in with the well-roundedness, he can kind of just overcome challenges that it doesn't seem like he should be able to overcome if we're talking about purely technique analysis of a matchup. So I'm I'm very curious what you guys think in that regard in terms of what makes him this good, but I was I was blown away, bl literally blown away, maybe more than any fight I can remember in a long time, in terms of what he was able to do to a guy as unbelievable as Robert Whitaker. Omar, what do you think? What were your thoughts on the performances of these two guys and and the formula that Duplessis presents in the cage? I'm a person who loves technique i love to watch and this is for anybody i mean it could literally be a dude at the gym it could be an amateur fight it could be a professional fight it could be whatever i love watching technique drikas duplessis has like the like ugliest fucking everything i've ever seen 
and it works. It absolutely works. So kind of like Mark, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. He took Robert Whitaker down with like a headlock choke that w- should never have worked ever. This is not even how you do it. It wasn't even like a, like a proper judo throw. He just like, like bullied him down to the ground. It was ridiculous. And I think the real issue is you can't find a guy like Drikus Duplessis to emulate. And so when you're training for somebody like him, you're not going to get sparring partners that are going to give you the looks that you're going to get from Drikus Duplessis once you're actually in there with him. There is the power, obviously. There is all that. But there is an awkwardness and a a a, a fucked upness to the way that this man fights and it doesn't make sense and it's very difficult to prepare for and I think the real issue was is we saw Robert Whitaker drop the ball and we saw him not make any adjustments throughout he was literally not doing anything to the body rarely doing anything to the to the legs he was trying to push forward throwing those counter or those uh those jabs forward jab left hook trying to continuously hit an area that was shelled up from jump and Whitaker never really did anything to make the adjustments that Drikus was making on the fly to him. Um, so Drikus seems like he's obviously super competent in in the octagon, but the technique is just like I just I I, I can't believe it worked. It works. I, I can't hate on it, but I just can't want to copy it either. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, I think it's to your to your question mark. Like, what is the formula that, the recipe that Duplessis brings into the octagon? He has decent size. I don't think he's the biggest middleweight, but he's just... Oh, I like think he's t- huge. He's not... But how tall is he? Is he, is he like 6'1", six 6'2"? Six oh, I don't know about height. He's, I just mean... He's thick. He's so thick. much bigger than everyone he fights. He's, yes, he's, he's such a... Uh, for lack of a better term, a metamorphic frame. He's just... Uh, He's a, he's, a a, 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 he's a tank, man. And he knows it. And he's a bruiser. And that's he, he, just, he uses it. And he's, he's, he is uh, sacrificing brain cells for the... Uh, he's play, playing the long game here. Or maybe, no, it's the opposite of the long game. And uh, he, he uses yeah. incredible pressure. He's, he's a bruiser. He comes forward. He, it, he has, yeah, some kind of awkward striking style. And, and, and a great incredible unbreakable spirit what a handful what a handful for any middleweight one thing is for certain it will be a very interesting matchup between him and Adesanya let's talk about the moment that we got treated to when Israel Adesanya was brought into the octagon after Duplessis win uh I I am I I count myself among I, I understand it's good theater but the the poor guy just just fought for like ten minutes. <laughs> like, can you give the guy a break and not have somebody like get in his face? That being said, it was a I'm not gonna call it a special moment. It was a unique moment. It was a unique exchange. Uh, Omar, what were your thoughts? Let's yeah. start with you. I mean, I feel like my thoughts were very similar to probably a lot of people's thoughts when. Israel started dropping end bombs. I was like, "Oh, this is taking quite a turn here." Um, got really dark really quick. A lot of shades of Connor versus could be back in the day when things got real dark and we started talking about terrorism and all kinds of crazy shit. Um, this is this is giving me those the bad vibes, the bad juju. Um, I, I I mean, it's it's a fight that people are going to want to watch at this point. You can't ignore. The, the the tension between them, right? The the it's gonna sell, I think. And Izzy is one of these guys that knows how to work the business. And I think think a part of him is a little emotional, but I think he's using it. And uh and you can tell he's emotional. He's over here talking about 36 and me. It's not even it's not even the same fucking same numbers. You know what I mean? Like either of those numbers is correct. <laughs> no. It's not. It's not it's not. What is it? I don't so mean, it's I don't just mean the 36 you know, and I, me. I, uh, yeah. Nobody does, but it's, I think he's, uh, he's, he's emotionally affected by it for sure. But I think he's still 
Uh, in his mind, I think he's still thinking about the business part as well. From the time I first heard Izzy's reaction, as in well before this event, I'm saying, when Izzy first reacted to Drikus' comments about Africa, I knew the build to this fight, if we ever got here, was probably going to be dark. And I almost feel like no one is really the bad guy here. Like... Yeah, Dreek has made this point of that he trains in Africa and he reads African era every day. And these other guys who have been African champions left Africa and did it out of other places. And, and that is the point he was trying to make. And I get that point. But at the same time, when dudes who are African born African blood hear that, you know, you got to remember, Africa has a, a very complicated history. Especially and South Africa. When correct. And when they when they are hearing this from a man who is only in Africa because his family once came there from another country during d- dark times in Africa, they are not gonna love to hear it. And they also have a right to not love to hear it. So that's what I mean. Like Drikus has a right to make the point, and maybe he didn't quite think how it would go over, and they have a right to be like, bro. I don't care what African air you breathe. I'm more African than you will ever be. So <laughs> everyone has a, a, a right to make the point they want to make. But when I heard it, I was like, Izzy is either going to brush this off and just, you know, play, play his cool, usual, ah, it's nonsense, whatever. I don't have to concern myself with who's more African. Or he's going to take it super to heart. And we know Izzy can do that with things. And he did. So from the first time he commented on it, I was like, this is going to get dark. Did I think it was going to go quite that route when he came into the cage? Maybe not, but I have since seen an interview. So I heard a lot of people saying, oh, look how bombed as he was. My God, he was bombed. He was bombed. I've, I've since seen an interview of him saying he was going to do exactly that, that if Drikus won, he was going to go in the cage and call him a word that I'm not going to say right now, but you know the word that he said quite a lot of times. So that was all planned. That was what Izzy wanted to go in there and call him over and over again. So that was his tact there. And, yeah, this is what we're going to get now in the build-up to this fight. It's going to get dark. There's probably going to be other things said that make some of us feel like, oh, man, wish we could just focus on the fight here. But it's the fight game, and I I feel like they probably both have a right to say some things, and we're going to hear them. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it was awkward for everybody. I'm I'm just glad that Duplessis didn't say it himself. There was a moment where I, was, I, I think the world was kind of like, oh, my God, here it comes. Because what did he well, When Duplessis he said, says, I'm not your, I was like, no. And then he said, brother. And I was like, whoo. <laughs> yeah. Like, what did he say? He was like, I'm about? African. I'm but I, sure your, I sure ain't your brother, yeah. bro, or whatever. Yeah. I was I like, he was say something else for a second. I'll, I'll tell you what, man. Duplessis looked, I don't want to say shaken by the moment, but like he wasn't ready for that. No, no like, he was, but again, he, he just fought. It was so tough. It was so tough. Yeah. But uh, I just hope that Duplessis is careful with what he says in this buildup so that he doesn't actually cross any racial lines and get this darker than it has to be. He can right. say his whole I'm, I'm the African, I live in Africa deal as much as he wants, but he's got to stay there. Yeah. Well, so he, but here's the thing, right? Like the, the Africa point, the way he said it, it's super easy to insinuate you're 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 making assumptions about other African champions or other champions that claim that they are African champions or, or from Africa, right? Mm-hmm. Like Izzy was like nine or ten when he moved to New Zealand. Like it wasn't like he was a, a, a loaf of bread and then was oh, yeah. moved over here before he actually grew up in uh, Nigeria. Like he has roots in Nigeria. He had friends in Nigeria. He had a life in Nigeria. These guys like are born and kind of raised there, Mm -hmm. and then they move to a different country. It's sort of like if somebody from Colombia, which is very, like, or any fucking country here on this side of the hemisphere, dudes come up, you know, to go to school or do whatever the hell up in here in America, and they've been living in their home country for 12 plus years or whatever it is, and it takes them a little while to adjust and whatever else, but it doesn't make them any less African or whatever it is that they are. Um, But I think that his choice of words, the way that he specifically wanted to call out how he's 
the real African champion, I think that's what got him in trouble. And I think had he just said something like, and Ariel made this point actually, but I think had he said something like, I'm going to be the best African champion, no one would have had a fucking problem with that. Even if he said, I'm going to be the first African champion who still trains out of Africa, it would have been like, yeah, no one can argue that. Yeah. Right. But he, he worded it a little more aggressively. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Continue. Like he kept doubling down. Like he was like going, going in stages of like how African he was. And, and it's and like, bro, like said, chill the fuck out. He also said these guys never brought the belts to Africa and they literally all did. Like all I have them. seen videos of all three of them in Africa <laughs> with the belts. <laughs> all, all of them. It was literally like the first thing that they did. It was like yeah. the week of they go to Africa and like, yeah. it was like parades and everything. Yes. Correct. And he's probably Usman just like upset. building UFC Africa. He's like heavily invested. Dude, and Ganu is building and literally the ambassador of PFL Africa. Oh yeah, and him too. You're right. Good point. Yes. Like it's it's just it's a weird it's like I get maybe he wants the country behind him, maybe he wants to be the country men or something like that, but his choice of words is less than mids, my guys. <laughs> yeah. Well, Let's uh, right. let's talk about something else. Let's move on. <laughs> Unless you guys want to quickly match up uh, Bobby Knuckles. Oh, sure, I will, because I like my matchup. Uh, he's beaten so many of these guys, but there is one guy that he has not fought, and I think he really fits in here pretty perfectly right now, and that man is Sean Strickland. I would love to see that. <laughs> oh, that's a great fight. <laughs> Yeah, it sure is. Yeah, let's go with that. That's a great fucking fight. Because if he's not going to fight, you know, Pereira is obviously going up to, to 205. That was a fight that I would have loved to have seen if he was staying around at 185. Yeah, but same. I would have. Strickland, Strickland's a great fight. That's a good one. It is. It sure is. Okay. Let's.